hearts of a bite no reorder in the order yet who is said no order yes I'd can up so such has got good afternoon it's so good to be here with you today to share these few minutes with you to share God's word we come into your home in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit as you know, this is the period of Advent in Armenian Islam. It's 50 days in preparation for the great feast of Theophany. That is sometimes known as Armenian Christmas, but really the word Theophany means the revelation of God. And it is an exact translation of the Armenian word, which is Astvaza Haidnutyun. That is what January 6th is. It is the revelation of God in our midst. That on that day God came to us and He delivered love incarnate to us so that we can learn, we can experience, and we can participate in divinity. It is such a beautiful feast and it is an extraordinary feast among the Armenian, saint, uh, Armenian feasts that we set aside this period of time, this Advent period, to prepare ourselves. And as you remember in the previous sessions, as today, each of the gospel messages that I speak about brings us closer to that theophany. And so today, we pick out this particular passage, which is today, this Sunday, in this period of Advent, it is the gospel passage, the lectionary uh, points us to. It is from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 14, verse 15 and on. So I want to share with you this story. Let me tell you, it's some Jesus is talking and he says, a man gives a great banquet and he invites many friends, he says. And at that time of the banquet, he sent his servant to say to those he had invited. So imagine, here's a man, he's, a, he's doing okay, and he wants to have a big banquet, and he sends out his servants, and he says, hey, I've invited you, come to my banquet. And come, all is ready. But they all alike, every one of them, begin to make excuses. The first one says, I have bought a field, I must go out and see it. I pray you, excuse me. I mean, they're courteous, right? They're nice, but they have an excuse. And another one says, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I have to examine them. I pray you, have, I have an excuse. Please forgive me. And another one says, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. You know, well, I've got to go on a honeymoon, you know? So please forgive me. So the servant came back and reported this to the master. Then the householder, in anger, <gasps> Well, of course, nobody came to his party. Of course he's angry. <laughs> In anger, he said to his servant, go out into all of the city. Go and round up anyone. Go out quickly to the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in the poor and the maim and the blind and the lame. What? Bring in all the people that nobody else would invite. Bring them to my party. And the servant said, Sir, what you commanded has been done, and still there is room. And the master said "Go to the, to the servant, Go out to the highways and the hedges, and compel people to come in, that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those men who were invited shall taste my banquet. Wow! What a message today in preparation for Christmas, in preparation for Theophany. I mean, what's the message here? That... There's a banquet, and are we invited? Are we not invited? Well, let's take a look at this. Okay, first of all, the man invites people, okay? So I, I got an invitation here, okay? It's a birthday blowout, it says, and it, it's a picture of Tom and Jerry. It's a very nice little invitation card. And in it, there's some writing in it. It says, I hope you can come. It's a birthday party for our son, Hagop. Now, I don't want to go to Hagop's party. I want to go to a party for my sister Sona. It's on Saturday, December 17th. No, I don't think so. I think I want to go on Friday instead, December 16th. It's at 2.30. No way, I can't make it at 2.30. I want to go after work. I'm going to make it 6 o'clock. And it says the place is Griffith Park. No, I'm not going to Griffith Park. What is that, a park? I'm going to go have a party over there. No, I want it at a restaurant. I'm just going to write it. Now, would you do something like that? Would you do something as silly as that? Somebody has invited you to a party 
would you, would you go in there and say, no, I don't want this, I don't want that, I don't want to come at this time, I want to go another time? No, because the invitation is for an event that is taking place. And so God wants us to realize that his invitation to life is right now. The invitation to participate in God's banquet is right this second. And he's inviting you and he's putting down a beautiful set of conditions. He's saying, I want you to enjoy it. It's a lifetime that begins with your first breath and it ends with the last breath that you have. So come and fill it up. Enjoy this banquet. But you say, well, nobody would do this. Who would do that? Who would scratch out the invitation? Well, we all do. We all make excuses. God has given us this beautiful life. What do we do? Well, we pollute it with all kinds of stuff. Well, we pollute our environment, don't we? We pollute ourselves with all kinds of drugs, carcinogens, there's smoking, there's, there's addictions that we have, there's drinking, there's different things that we take up and we abuse and we abuse the body that we have. We abuse the environment that we have. God didn't give us smog. He didn't give us filth. He didn't give us pollution. But what have we done? We filled it up with pollutions. In other words, we are drawing out a new set of instructions for life. And so God, at the end of it, what does he say? He gives the example. He says, instead, this man went out. And he said, instead of you that I have invited, I'm inviting anybody who wants to come. Well, this message happened to be for the particular group that Jesus was talking to, who thought themselves that they were the special ones, who thought that they were above everything else, that they were worthy of God's love in a very special way, that God spoke to them directly, that they were chosen by God. God says no. He says the ones that I want are not the ones who think that I want them, but the ones who come and participate. Those who open, I've opened the door and come into the door. You see, every day of our lives, God is inviting us. God is inviting us to participate in his very big banquet. Every Sunday morning, his big banquet, of course, is the divine liturgy, the Badarak. And he celebrates that with all of us, with the communion of the saints, with all the greatest Christians in the world. He invites everybody to that, to that feast. It's every Sunday morning. And the, the, the celebrant is there, and we're participating in the Lord's meal. And Jesus Christ is in our midst. But we all make our excuses Sunday mornings, don't we? I know, we do. Well, I don't want to go to church. I may see so-and-so over there. I don't want to go in there, you know. It's nicer up at the mountains. Oh, you know what? I have one day a week that I could sleep in. You know, and that one day, I would rather go out to the beach. You know, I love God, and God has made the beach. It's beautiful over there. We make up excuses. We do the same thing as we did with this card. God has given us an invitation, but we put in our own rules. And God is not one of those gods who's going to go out there and say, oh, please, please come. I need you to come to my party. No. He says, you don't want it? It's your business. It's your business. He says, okay, I agree. You can go to the beach. It's beautiful over there. But do you know who created the beach? Do you know who created those beautiful waves out there? You can go up to the mountains, but have you ever seen the design of those mountains? Do you know who created that? And so when I call you to my church, it's just to get together as a family and see what we can do. And you say, well, what can we do? What is different about church life? What is so important about coming to the party, to the invitation that God has given us? The difference is that with that invitation, God is giving us a calling to do. Remember there was the scene once where Jesus' mother and his brothers came to see him. People get all hung up. What do you mean Jesus has brothers and everything? Oh, forget that, okay? Don't get into that discussion. Listen to what the story is telling you. Jesus says, who are my brothers? Who is my mother? It is those people who hear the word of God and do it. In other words, do you want to be a family? Do you want to be a member of Jesus' party? Do you want to be part of the communion of saints? Do you want to be with the Christians to do the work in this world? You have to hear the message and then do it.
And the message comes very clearly out of today's scriptures. It says, call the lame, call the people who have absolutely no way, no possible way of paying you back. You know why? Because God did that for us. We have absolutely no way of paying God back for the beautiful gift that he has given us. Do you realize that? He's given us life. He's given love in our heart. How could you pay that back? What are you going to do? Put it on, write him out a check? What are you going to do? Put it on a credit card? No, you can't pay it back. And God tells us, the only way that you can pay back is by doing for others. And so at the end of this, he says, go out there and call the people. He says, the, the, this man went out and he called the lame, the maimed, all the people who ordinarily wouldn't come to the party were now invited. Well, in a way, you all understand by now that those lame and those blind are all of us, the sinners. We're called in to this party, and together we're going to have a celebration. It's called the celebration of life, where we can do the wrong things because, yeah, we're not perfect, but we know that we have a loving God, a compassionate God, and that God is walking with us. He's helping us during our difficulties. And as you see, we're getting ready for the Christmas season. And what do you see all around you? You see people talking about sales and people talking about giving and everything. Jesus is getting, giving us a very strict command over here. He says, when you give a banquet, don't give it for people who can do, who have um, means of giving back to you. Give to others. Now, next week when you join me, we're going to continue on this message. Next week, as I promised you, this entire session of Advent is a period of preparation. And of course, we're being bombarded every day by the media. We're being bombarded by ads and we're being told that this is the season to be jolly, to be merry. This is the season to spend money. Well, I'm going to treat you to an interesting secret code. If you thought that the Da Vinci Code was very secret, I'm going to teach you the Christmas cord Code according to the Armenian Church. That's coming up next week. Today I wanted to give this to you as a primer. This week we're studying the book of uh, the, the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 14. This was read in the church this morning. It's about the great banquet that people refuse to come to. Don't be left out. Don't be like the person, and you know it's silly. Nobody would ever write on an invitation that I want these things. Don't be like that with God. God has given us this beautiful life. He's saying, enjoy it. He's given us beautiful talents. He's saying, use those talents. Take advantage of this day. Take advantage of the life that God, is, God has given you. Because it is a very big blessing. And it is, are you ready? A gift from Him to you. So now we're going to find out Next week when we get back, what can we give to Jesus, to God, on Christmas? Because after all, it is his birthday. That's coming up next week. But I want to remind you that until next week, please join us in your Armenian churches. Every Armenian church has opportunities for you to get involved. You can go to the Diocesan website, pull down the page about the parishes, find out the parish that's closest to you, talk to the priest, talk to people in there, and get involved. If you want to get involved with me, I'm at epostle.net. That's apostolic evangelism for an electronic and expanding universe. So until next week, reminding you that all of this is done in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.